Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity with me, Bring It On. I'm gonna speak to Grimda. Hello. Nerdly Dwarf surveys the stacks. Her skin looks as tough and wrinkled as a walnut. Despite her stature, she manages to look down her nose at you. You're welcome to look around. Let the priests and scriveners continue their search. She shoots the nearest robe figure a withering glare. When do to give them any other excuses? What are they looking for? Maybe I could find it. She sizes you up, stroking her chin. Could you now? She scowls at the rogue priest again. You certainly couldn't do any worse than this lot, anyway. These are made off with an ancient scroll of wow. They intend to blaspheme by selling that which should remain hidden. A circuit of the hundred visions. Her wiry eyebrows arc over her spectacles. The guards caught one of them, but were overzealous in their interrogation. All they could piece together was something about a farmhouse and the road to Deerford. Track the thieves down. I don't care what you do with them, but bring back the scroll. Wild rewards the persistent seeker, and so do I. An ancient scro scroll of Wild. There's a fine prize. I mean, a worthy task. What else do you need? I had questions about the missing scroll. Ask. Tell me what you know about the thieves. Very little, except they were foolish enough to believe they could steal from the God of Secrets. That, they were fleeing to a farmhouse. How should I handle the thieves? However you can. Kill them, rob them, leave them. It makes no difference to me. She waves a hand and smiles grimly. I'll consider it one of Wow's <laughs> mysteries. Now what's so special about this scroll? Wow is the God of Secrets. If I told you that, I'd cheapen it, wouldn't I? She cackles. It's a parable. The kind that nourishes the inquisitive mind and poisons the foolish. Now let's talk about something else. What else do you need? Tell me about yourself. I'm the High Archivist of the Hall of, Hall of Revealed Mysteries. She coughs loudly into her fist. I'm too old and too busy to be bothered with the inane questions. Even just one or two. Kind of size. I'd like to know more about Wile. It's Whale. Has it been pronounced for us? Wile, it makes it sound like a while. I'll say Whale. Her smile reveals a row of crooked teeth. That's the rub, isn't it? Whale is a god of things hidden and revealed. The more of the hundred visions one sees, the more one has yet to discover. We often call Whale he who sees and is not seen. It is neither male nor female. To assign any definitive char characteristic to Whale is to miss another essential part of its divinity. The Hundred Visions A term of reverence for Whale's many revelations. Despite the name, they're infinite. Each epiphany leads to yet another enigma. Great, sounds like the enigma from Wrath of the Righteous. And I thought I was busy. Farewell. Yeah. Right, we have a new quest. So I know we have more building to explore here in Copper Lane, but because we spent last episode reading so much, I think we're going to mix it up and go back to our keep and defend it. Then we can come back here and do some more reading. Also, I'm still split about reading everything like I demonstrated last episode. Ideally, what I do is collect all the books and like read one per episode if I want to do that instead of trying to do that all. But then I have to keep track of it, remember which ones I've read. And then, in the instance of the Hall of Revealed Mysteries, it would count as stealing the books. I'm not trying to do that either. So, I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. I'll just wing it. Yeah, I think the last building we have to explore here is Adamus Den Expedition Hall. I feel mm -hmm. sorry for whoever has to clean up this place. 
Okay. And we have a messenger, so let's go. Oh, and we finished some more construction. Can I build anything else? Yeah, we can afford quite a bit. So we finished the main keep. Let us finish the barracks. It costs them, take most of our money. So upgrading the barracks will allow you to employ hirelings to defend your stronghold during attacks. Where's the oh there it is. <laughs> I was looking the wrong way. I bear a message from the Ducal Palace. My greetings, my lord. I bear an urgent message from Chancellor Warren of Defiance Bay. I request that you meet with him at your earliest convenience in the Ducal Palace. I was just there. Why would you send a message to my stronghold? You know what? It's fine. The claim that Noir has been called into question by the Gathbin family. Earl Badamar, or Bademar, has issued a ruling on the matter. Both you and Lord Gathbin must be present. Who's Chancellor Warren? He's an arbiter of legal matters for Earl Bat... the Bademar? Let's say Badamar. Badamar of the Gat Grasp. Uh, tell me about this Lord Gathbin. An old Adirin lineage, I believe. He looks around the Great Hall. The former lord of this stronghold, distant relative of Lord Gathbin, allied himself with the losing side during the War of Defiance. Oh, Cade Noir is mine. Gathbin family disagrees. As you claim is not based on lineage, an official ruling is required to remedy this dispute. I'll go meet him then. The Chancellor will wait you in the records room of the Ducal Palace and first fires. The messenger bows, then strides away. Okay, I'm not worried about that right now. He can wait. But this can't. I'm gonna find ourselves some Zorops, then we'll go rest up, and then we will... Oh. Actually, you know what? Let's throw some fireballs back here instead. Nothing to it. Not going to beat the team in their home stadium. At least the odds are against your favor. Or not in your favor. It's very nice. We're not sleeping here, are we? Uh, we are sleeping here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sneak up on you. I just... Well, you seemed... preoccupied. You've just begun to stretch and soothe the aches from your body when you feel Aloth over your shoulder. He looks away quickly when you notice him, kneading his hands into squirming fists. What's on your mind? I suppose I've just noticed you acting a little, uh, unusual lately. Talking to people who aren't there, remembering flashbacks of your previous life. I, I just want to make sure you're doing all right. It seems to be wringing each bead of sweat from his fingers. He stares at a spot on the ground. Uh, yes, I am. Ah, well, good. I should let you rest. 
It looks like we'll have another full day tomorrow. He looks away again. It's... Oh, wait. No, man. Here, yeah. he said that. Yeah, I wonder if... I think the other option would have opened up more dialogue with him. Because he seems uncertain. Again, I'm... Like, 99% certain he's also awakened. In fact, do we have a quest for him? I don't remember his quest. A quest for him yet. It's the only companion that we huh. don't have a quest for. Yeah, so we have Sagani's quest, we have. I think Kana's quest is tied to this, right? Because he wanted to go down into the endless paths with me. Oh, here it is. Time and tide is his. And here's Durance. Yeah, we're going to the records archive. Yeah. We're going to go there for our yeah. personal quest. It all works out. I know I can speed this up, but I enjoy these moments of calm in the game. Just, you know, running, taking in the sights and sounds. Sure. Mercenaries. All fancy weapons and no skill. So they will hold hmm. off on of reading that. We might read it later. Bandon Lear. A well grinned man steps through the hall with a confident swagger, a smug grin etched on his face. He's flanked by five other hard looking individuals. One of his companion uh, one of his companion be companions eyes you for a moment before spitting chew at your feet. Another pup come wandering in, I see. Just know that Vines Giant Slayers run things around here, and you'll be fine. Uh, never heard of them. His eyes narrow. You have now. Stick around Defiance Bay, and you will again. Plenty of bounties to go around. There's a reason the Giant Slayers get the lion's share. Remember that. Voice bellows across the hall. Enough jabber, Bine. You gonna do the job or talk about it? <laughs> His jaw tightens. Winning's right. The coin ain't gonna collect itself. He looks at his comrades and jerks his chin toward the door. See you around, pup. I think uh. he's got something... for me. Better give me a pet name. Uh, can I lockpick this? How may I help? I shall be discreet. Without getting in trouble? I mean, the lock is red, so probably not. I'll see what I can find. We'll hold uh. off on it for now. The outer bands of this target are pocked with countless holes. I was for practice in the expedition hall only. Purchase weapons for personal use from uh, Sonild. No exceptions. Osric. Keeping an eye out. Have you even had a weapon before? 
Let's then wait into that swing. Now, the edge of these swords have been blunted for practice. So scrawled Commander Cliver across this dummy in chalk. For the is. last time, Aidwig, keep your fucking blade up. If that dummy was armed, it'd have your head off. Nope, this is Osric. Now, this man watches the training adventurers with a disinterested contempt as someone whose skills are wasted in this setting. He barks at one of them. Tell me about the expedition hall. It's treasure hunting, plain and simple. Sponsors put up money, our adventurers to go explore the wilds, looking for ruins mostly. They come back alive, they split the spoils. If not, because they handle their weapons like this lot in front of me, who might as well be digging their own graves right now. Got business with me? I'm looking for work. You want an expedition? Talk to Wenon. I just handle these mercenary shit shovelers. Uh, adventurers, I mean. <laughs> like how his voice acted too. I went and clears his throat in the his throat in the background. Osric's mouth puckers. Although, he sizes you up. I do have something I need done. Something that requires He glances sidelong at an adventurer flailing away helplessly at a dummy. Competence. What do you need done? I was formerly one of the knights of the Crucible. When I left they kept my arms and armor. The arms they can have, but the armor belonged to my family. I'd like it back. Why don't you just go ask for it back? No, no. I'd like that, I'm sure. But I won't be going. Sooner be torn apart by dogs than give them the satisfaction. Ostrich looks away from you, his jaw protruding. Doesn't sound like leaving the Crucible Knights was your choice. You don't choose to leave knighthood. The Crucible Knights, they may not be a real knighthood, but the oaths you swear just as true. He stares off a moment. Still, turns out that even unofficial knighthoods have politics. You cross the wrong man, suddenly all kinds of accusations are thrown your way, and nobody believes you. Nothing more destructive than a crowd with the wrong idea. Uh, what's this armor? It's a breastplate. Not much to look at, and it's seen far too much use, but it's been in my family since the liberation. I'll see what I can do. Then it's Penhelm you're looking for. A low snake of a man. If he was to die choking on his own black tongue, it'd be too kind of fate. He kept it when he had me kicked out. He nods with a trace of gratitude. He leans in closer. I got word from a reliable source. The Penhelm visited a forger in Andra's gift, right after having his soul lineage read by a cipher in Dunred Row. If you have in your heart to find a way to ruin his life while you're there, well, drinks on me. Having his soul lineage read. It's a requirement to join the knights. They have to ensure an novitiate doesn't have a subversive lineage. If Penhelm's superiors found out his affidavit was a fake, his career would be over. Every novitiate gets an affidavit from Dunreed Row, and those are stored at Crucible Keep. If you find Penhelm's, one of those ciphers could tell you if it's real. How does he know if Penhelm's is real or not? It feels like he knows something that's obviously going to ruin this guy's reputation. But how would he have found that out? Tikani scratches the back of her neck. If generations of Masuk's traditions are any indication, this Penhelm probably doesn't remember it. Still, a past like that is no, has to count for something. I need to hire an adventurer. He grunts. Maybe more than one by the look of you, after he just gave me a job. I'll show you who's available. So I'm actually not going to bother with that. Mm. Our daggers mark the locations of various Anguithan ruins. Notes posted around the map list bets on current expeditions. Alright, we'll finish exploring this area before we speak to Wenin. Or Wenin. Oh, that's so old. So we'll probably spend some time speaking to him. Keeping quiet. Or, yeah, reading his inventory. I'm sure he has plenty of unique items to look at. We'll hold off on that as well for right now. Flight! Flight! I'll have it in no time. The work of a moment.
Laying low. I want to see what I can do. The work of a movie. A geological map. This map marks areas of geological activity in the Deerwood and Ear Glunfoth. Of note is the description of a cavern where molten rock flows within a deep chasm. Huh? It is a quest item, as I suspected. Don't stand on ceremony. State your business. This rough-looking man glances at you briefly as he scans the mercenaries milling around the room. Tell me about the dozens. When his expression becomes serious, the timbre of his voice deepening. Good men and women trying to walk in the footsteps of great men and women who came before us. We're a loose association of warriors and expeditionaries in the Deerwood. Not as fancy as the Crucible Knights, mind you, but at least we remember our roots. At least they remember someone else's roots, or pretend to be like them, he means. Your roots. The Crucible Knights take pride in having won the Deerwood's freedom 150 years ago. But we're the ones who've protected it. Everyone knows that the Saints' War ended when the Godhammer destroyed Widewind. Excuse me, my throat's not behaving. Destroyed Widewind at Evan Dewar Bridge. A lot of folks don't know about how Widewind wound up on that bridge. Seven men, five women. They walked out of Halgot Citadel and faced down a god. Held him there until the bomb went off. He thumps the table. That's the legacy we defend. Some call us mercenaries, but we don't need matching armor and silky cloaks to remember our roles. We're the same now as we were then. We stand up for the people. First line of defense, whatever it takes. We got new enemies now. It's not Widewind, it's his darn legacy. It's the darn soul butchers in Brackenbury making things worse on all of us. Probably causing the whole thing, one way or another. We haven't gone anywhere, and there's a lot more than 12 of us now. We defended Deerwood once. We'll do it again. Winnin casually nods your way. His eyes continue to float from mercenary to mercenary as he speaks. What else do you need? I'm looking for work. Go see Osric. He's usually got something. You do well for him, maybe I can find you more. He looks you up and down. Finally, he points to a man leading drills. They spoke to him. Now, Osric sent me to you. I was looking for an expedition. I have expeditions, but they're not for just anyone. We dozens help those of like mind indeed. How about you give Osric a hand first? Show us where you stand. I'm not going anywhere. Alright, farewell. Okay, let's take a look at these books over here, and then we'll go speak to Solnild and his inventory. Well, we'll be speaking to the inventory, we'll, we'll be reading it. Right, we've read this one before. We've read this one as well. Alright, the Dozens is new. A scarcely a decade ago, on the Ivan Dewar Bridge, seven men and five women fought valiantly to protect their homeland. They volunteered for the mission knowing it was up to them, and them alone, to prevent St. Widewind from crossing the bridge. They succeeded, even though they lost all but four of their number in the battle, and Widewind was on the bridge when the Godhammer detonated. The final four were lost in the blast as well. The sacrifice a testament to their dedication. The Dozens, a group ostensibly formed for the protection of the Deerwood, was founded in the honor of those men and women. Indeed, those twelve men and women are posthumously regarded by the uh, Dozens as their true founders. Initially, the group dedicated itself to protecting Deerwood from invasion, patrolling the borders tirelessly in search of Red Searin forces regrouping for another attack. And that attack never materialized, Many of the dozens thought the next threat might come from the Othasian Oth loyalists living in Deerwood and began to turn their attention within. All new members of the dozens are required to swear an oath to remember the sacrifice of their founders, remain vigilant against Riot Cirrus, and any followers of Eothis. To this end, worshippers of Eothis are routinely harassed by the dozens. The mindset of this group may be hard for some to understand, as any fanatical devotion can sometimes overshadow the, overshadow the ideals. 
but the original dozen knowingly sacrificed their lives for Deerwood. From the dozen's perspective, how can new members of the dozens be any less committed to their country's welfare? What better way could there be to honor their founders? The dozens are not a large group, but they lack in size. They make up in fervent devotion to their cause and a gift for gaining the ear of commoners. This makes them a force to be reckoned with, and there's no more influential group in, this sh in shaping the discourse surrounding Widewind's legacy. A small but very vocal minority of extremists in the group are calling for a new war with Red Cirrus. Talk of purging the Deerwood of all followers of Eothis is also being touted. More recently, they have begun to see in the practice of animancy a possible cause to the legacy. They have taken to the streets of Defiance Bay and the dirt roads of many distant settlements to make their case to the general public. Some point to this as the one source of a recent surge in vigilantism and violence in the country. Of that, I have no doubt. Huh? I shall be quiet as a calm sea. Which is not. Hail and well met. The woman looks up from polishing a dagger. I haven't seen you before. You headed out with an expedition company? She raises an eyebrow. Or are you betting on one? Uh, tell me about the expeditions. There are groups of adventurers that venture into the wilderness. More than a few of them try their luck scouring the ruins. Many of them come back empty-handed. If they come back at all. Betting on them is almost as risky as actually going. But that's how the expeditions get funded. Every once in a while, one of the adventuring companies will strike it big and make a fortune for their backers. How long have you worked at Admeth's Den? She leans on the countertop and drums her fingers. Oh, a few years. I got in the minute the last merchant cleared out. She nods toward the main area of the hall. They've got new expeditions venturing out every week, so this is a great place to do business. And the dozens make loyal friends and loyal customers. As long as you stick by them. He taps the counter. The vendor who was here before me. They ran him out when he sold his best helms to a pair of crucible knights. I've been careful not to make the same mistake. Can I buy something? I'm afraid not. See, dozens only do business with me as long as I only do business with them. And they're good customers. She jerks her thumb at the door. If you get on Osric's good side, he can make an exception for you. He's probably training some of the new recruits right now. Ah, farewell. Huh? So I won't be spending any time reading item descriptions this episode. That works out. Alright, so we have a quest in the catacombs. We'll do that in the next episode. I'm going to head over that way now. And get ready to descend into the dark under the city. I say that. I don't know how well lit, how well lit the catacombs are. I'm sorry, I can't talk or read today. It's been a few days since I recorded, so I'm a Have little, you ever little a rusty. Wizard, or do you merely hide? They will use you, cast you off when it suits them, never speak another word to you. Maybe they just don't answer to fiery whore. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling feel a little rusty today. I think it's been gosh. Five days since I've recorded. That's the longest break I've had of recordings in. Oh, hello there. Uh, you asked me for one and I said no. Not till you're older and more responsible. Do you remember this conversation? Where his eyes are fixed on the ground in front of him? Yes, sir. And yet I find you out here, playing with a blade that clearly belongs to the knights. Do you see the problem? I didn't steal it, honest. I traded a secret for it. He points at you. Ask him. Amor turns to you. Is what my son says true? Yes, it is. He's just a boy. Do you understand me? Who are you thinking? Getting him a blade like that. You stay away from him from now on. Come along, Gordy. We'll have you loitering out here all day. Sure. Well, this is honest about it. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't taken like a day off in years. Well, I take that back. Lately, I've had to do some pre-recording, so I've technically had days off. Sure. But this is the longest stint 
of uh, you know quote days off. All right, so I'm gonna call it here. Uh, next episode, we'll descend into the catacombs, see if we can't find oh, what's his name. For Dalton, we have to find Rowena, or the voice of Rowena, anyway. Alright, but for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.